welcome to Don't Call It Small Business. And I'm your host, Natasha Foreman. Oh my goodness, you're back. (laughs) You're back for part two of episode 14. Now, if you haven't listened to part one, then you need to listen to part one before you tune in to listen to part two. Don't put the cart before the horse. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. You can listen to this and, and you may be able to tie it all in, but you may find it best to listen to episode one first. But either way, I'm glad to have you here. It's an honor and privilege to be here with all of you. Let's see, let's pick up where we left off, shall we? So, in episode one, I had shared with you um, some of the dynamics. We started with the dynamics of marketing, and we talked about the bait and switch, and the clickbait, and the the uh, tag and hold, and the everything else, right? And I shared with you some marketing, advertising strategies, attempts, but with Spirit Airlines and um, other no-frill airlines in comparison to what we would see as the pricier Delta Airlines and Southwest Airlines. And so I examined that and I also explained to you why I would still ultimately choose Delta um, for the most part in at this present moment. And that's just my opinion. And then, you know, we tied into some other things and I share with you quotes from Seth Godin and Gary V and bringing us in through the reality of us being part of a social media bubble. And just like all bubbles, they burst. So the last thing that I shared with you was about how we align our marketing efforts and the mediums that we choose to market and advertise to potential customers and current customers, um, understanding that one thing that may work for you may not work for me and vice versa. And we have to really find what works best. And I can use the buzzword, our sweet spot, if you'd like, if you like the buzzwords. And um, just the realization that there's a constant change that must take place. And one of the biggest problems that companies face is their inability to see the need to constantly reimagine themselves, to reinvent themselves, to change up things that if you've been in a box, change it to a circle, a triangle, anything else, or just free flow with it. But you have to constantly look back and audit, audit your jobs, audit the processes, audit everything you do, you see, and use those customer surveys, actually use them, right? What's the purpose in putting them out there if you're not going to apply them? Constantly looking at your websites and social media and looking through the lens of the potential customers and your current customers and saying, what do these images, what do these messages say about us? What does it say to them? How are we telling our story? How are we um, engaging them to be in a relationship with us and to stay in a relationship with us and be happy about the relationship that they're in with us? And um, I shared with you about how last week, you know, I went and changed the company mission statement for Foreman and Associates because it no longer applied. It was no longer our mission. It was more part of our value statement. And that's something that companies need to constantly do. You need to constantly look at your why and examine your why. And maybe your why has changed. Maybe your why in the beginning was that you needed money to take care of your kids. And now your why is that you want to be able to present other people with the opportunities to do the same. Or your why could be that you want to um, now switch and you're trying to help with, you know, other efforts in other ways. But you need to always evaluate your why. And then you look at the way in which your how and what you're going to do it. So you look at your why, you're looking at the what, the what is your customer and the who and the who, right? And you're looking at how. So when, um, as I said earlier in the previous portion of this episode, when you're a service provider, you have to be more creative as to how you tell your story to the public so that the public can gauge whether your story is worthy of exploring further, right? And that means that maybe they're going to pick up a phone and and dial your number and, and try to figure out what you're all about. Maybe they're going to send you an email or fill out a contact inquiry form. Maybe they're going to send you a DM and through your social media if you have that open to them. Um, but 
either way, your story is going to either entice them or bore them. Either they're going to want to get to know you more, right? Like you would if you wanted to date someone or they're going to be turned off and walk away and choose to get into a relationship with someone else, right? With another company, with your competition, most likely. Now, this is especially true if the service that you provide isn't a high demand service. You're going to have to find ways to tell your story, to entice, to attract, to make people want to get to know you better. So like, for instance, a nail salon, massage therapist, and a lawn care service can be in great demand, especially if their rates are affordable. However, I want you to think of various service providers that may only be called on every blue moon. Like, think about it. Um, like a carpenter, painter, um, HVAC service, right? Um, those are uh, heating and... AC and all that, right? Um, window tenters, gutter cleaners, oh, tree cutters, uh, maybe even an exterminator. They have to generate a lot of leads to keep business flowing consistently. Am I right? The same is true of consultants and coaches. Tax preparers are busy when during tax season. So what are they doing to generate revenue off season? Lighting companies have to face this reality. I'm I'm referring to the companies that string the holiday lights starting in November to celebrate Christmas, New Year's, etc. And then they take them down like the end of January. They have to always think of creative ways to market their services to be relevant beyond the seasons. Because honestly, how many people are trying to light their houses during I don't know, 4th of July, maybe you want to put some red, white, and blue lights all around your house and your property. Maybe. Um, Maybe for St. Patrick's Day, you want some green and white lights around your house, but most likely you don't. So they have to always think of creative ways to market their services. They have to find a way to be relevant beyond the seasons in which they work. So like when I look at the state of Georgia here in the United States, we have these subdivisions and some public access pools that are closed after Labor Day weekend and they remain closed until um, basically like the almost like end of May each year. This was maddening to me coming from Southern California where pools are always open unless someone, you know, vomits in them. And then even then they're back up and servicing in a couple of days. I am not accustomed to a pool being closed, you know, My old subdivision, I felt like I should be able to go in the pool in October. If it's warm in October, I should be able to go in October. If it's warm in um, March, I should be able to be in the pool in March. However, because I, you know, we have cold weather and sometimes it snows and I don't know. They just feel like this is the thing that they do. Now, if you have your own home at, you know, you have your house and you have a pool in your backyard, it's your pool in your backyard. Of course, your pool is open year round. And if you want to jump in there and, you know, December and January, that's really up to you, especially if you have a heated pool. But for most things that are considered public access and public meaning, even within your subdivision, which is public to all the residents of the subdivision, and then some of the um, apartment communities as well. Um, they close during this time and I'm still baffled by it, but Hey, that's the rules. That's how you do. And I guess that if you want your pool opened beyond those time frames, you're having to pay a pool company to come out and service them during those times. So, uh, and I'm, I'm sure the cost of that increases during off season times. Now, when I think about this, my question is, is how do pool companies, pool service companies, excuse me, they, how do they supplement the lack of revenue from September to May each year? I mean, do they have like a, do they have this already this huge clientele of private clients who have residential pools within their backyards? Or are they also servicing the pools at like the local YMCA's and the LA fitnesses? Like, what are they doing to make up for that big gap from September to the following May of, you know, apartment complexes and subdivisions and certain public pools. 
So it's interesting because they have to ensure that they have more regular service clients during the off season. And that could put a financial burden on some companies. So I gave the pool service company as an example, but I want you to think of other companies that are seasonal or that, um, you know, have their highs during certain seasons or certain seasons actually put them in a low, like they just don't get any business during the season. Um, How do you supplement that? And when you, as a, a business owner, right, when you are considering your marketing efforts, what is your budget? Because you have to consider that. You have to invest a great deal of time and money into your marketing if you're attempting to hit several different platforms and mediums all at the same time, or if you're trying to do them in staggered stages, which is what I really recommend. Rather than taking that approach, um, and if you're, as, if you're going to do those two, but rather than taking that approach, you should consider testing platforms and mediums in the same way that consumers test you out, right? And how they test out your competitors. And then a, create your budget according to that type of um, strategy. So that's one of the men of many benefits of the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, blah, 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 right? Advertising um, plat- uh, options that you have that you can advertise your business or event based on those kind of um, testing methods. And because you can set the budget and control the spend for your daily, weekly, or monthly budget, right? You can say, I only want to spend $5 a day or $20 a day or $50 a day or, you know, $500 a month. Um, You can see which ads worked best or which ones just tanked, right? They just crash and burn before before there was no launch. They just, you can do that and you can do so much more and faster than you could, of course, with print radio, TV, or billboard ads, and you can do it for less money. Now, and I mean, it's true. If I put a billboard up, do you know how long I'm going to have to wait in order to see how many people saw the billboard? register that 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 whatever's written on the billboard applies to them and it served possibly serves their needs they then either wrote down or memorized the website or phone number that was on the billboard and then with all of the clutter and chaos that's in the world right there's a bunch of clutter we have a bunch of things that are grabbing your attention whether or not they then sat down and either made that phone call or typed in that website and then if if they didn't make the phone call and speak directly what if they did went to the website what is my website saying to them how is it answering their questions how is it getting them to me faster that's a lo- that could be a long time that could be a billboard that's up 30 days 60 days 90 days before I really have what you'd call enough traction, enough uh, interested people that become customers. Because people can see the billboards all day long. And I see billboards all the time. It's rare that I turn around and say, oh yeah, I'm going to call that law firm. Why? Because I may not have a need for a law firm at this moment. So it's just going to like be filed away in my memory for later. Uh, okay, but you kind of need people now. I may see the, there's this plumber, I think it's, no, it's exterminator here in Georgia. And I'm not sure if they, if they're in other States, but they have this little mouse or the rat, whatever, I guess the mouse is on their signs and it's clever and everything. Um, I may not think about an exterminator though for a while, but when I do, maybe I'll remember the exterminator, the company with the mouse, but do I remember the name of the company? And at this very moment that I'm talking, I can't remember the name of the company. I just remember the mouse and the mouse was white. That's all I remember. And I think the mouse had like a wrench in its hand. Nope, not a wrench. Cause that was a plumber. So see, <laughs> I'm trying to recall certain things. And that's the thing. That's what happens when you may not necessarily see that return 
as quickly as you want. So the speed of using a Facebook ad, a Twitter ad, an Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever, social media based ad um, can allow you to see faster whether or not an ad um, has impact, whether or not it you know has a, a return on that investment faster. Now, let's be clear, although I mentioned the speed of tracking results, you should not be focused on speed. It's valuable in getting feedback sooner, but you should not abandon an ad or method off of one or even three initial reports. Some people do that. They're like, oh, you know, it's been one week. (laughs) You put out, uh, you launch your ad campaign and then, you know, you're upset because you may only had one person that liked, you know, that actually called or maybe only five people that clicked on it and it didn't go anywhere. And to you, it's a crash and burn. But let's be very clear. Sometimes you have to wait and see what works and what doesn't. And that, my friends, takes time. Maybe your ad campaigns are being sent to the wrong demographic or at the wrong times or the wrong days. Or maybe your net that you're casting is too small or too big. You have to test things out before you give up and walk away. And so, yes, it can, your, you can find out, you can get that research back sooner than you can with print, radio, TV, billboard, but you have to still invest the time. You have to test things out before you give up and walk away. The lower budget makes it easier to ride the wave, unlike taking out a hefty price traditional ad placement and having to wait and see. So you just have to take this into consideration. I mean, if you have a $5 budget, understand that your net that you're casting is going to be very small. Like it may just surround your neighborhood. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, (laughs) but I'm just, I'm just giving you that visual. Like, so just understand, but you do need to know your budget and be comfortable within that budget. Don't set a $500 budget. If you know that you can only afford a $50 budget, like, just be realistic. At the same token, um, if you can afford a $5,000 budget, then start off with a $500 budget. Um, or do, you know, do some staggering of a hundred and do maybe a hundred from each platform or whatever, but you have to like play with it. You have to dance with it. Just like you're trying to dance with your customers. You have to dance and see what works best. Um, you know, in the first part of this episode on the previous one, I had shared some Gary V and um, Seth Godin quotes. And I have another quote from Gary V. And he said, when I hear people debate the ROI, which is your return on investment of social media, it makes me remember why so many businesses fail. Most businesses are not playing the marathon. They're playing the sprint. They're not worried about lifetime value and retention. They're worried about short-term goals, end quote. Do you see that it's, you have to remember that business is about relationships. So when you think ROI, right, the return on your investment, it's not going to be instantaneous. Just like the girl or guy that you met one day didn't become your girlfriend or boyfriend the next day or even in a week. I mean, it takes time. Even when you were in elementary school and preschool, you didn't come to school on the first day of class and meet Cindy or Greg or Brian or Kevin or Marcus or whoever and see them and meet them. And the next day they're your boyfriend or girlfriend. No, it took time. This all about relationships. Just because, you know, for instance, you take someone out to dinner tonight doesn't mean that you will see a return on that investment anytime soon. You may be out the 40, 50, 150, 200 dollars or whatever you spent on dinner. <laughs> you may be out of that for a while before you see a return. And we're not sure what that return is and you, what that equates to. So why would you expect a quick and handsome return on your investment in your business and through your marketing campaigns and more specifically through your social media efforts? Business is a marathon and the ROI is more feasible in the long term of a year or more than in the short term of months or weeks or for some of us that think it could be in days. Your marketing efforts should anticipate a similar ROI schedule. 
as I've been looking at my own company in our restructuring, we had to put some things on hold reevaluate other things and design a new approach to how we share our story and form relationships with clients, workers, and vendors. And understanding that the way in which I see things, if I then outsource, you know, certain marketing efforts and, and sales efforts or whatever to other people, understanding I give them the chance to be able to um, connect the way I see things and I give them that free chance to do so. At the same token, I have to make sure that that I am also allowing them to see things that maybe they don't see. So I want to make sure that in putting things on hold, reevaluating some things, designing a new approach to how we share a story um, and, and how we form relationships with our vendors and our clients and the people that work with us that we are doing so in a way that is for longevity, that we're laying a strong foundation so that we, as we're building and climbing, that we're building on something solid. And since our mission is to help others identify, pursue, and achieve their why, we must position ourselves in a way that helps people and companies to see how we see ourselves. They have to see us how we see ourselves. And in doing so, create a value and desire to want to have a relationship with us. Because the thing is, if we see ourselves one way and and the customer, the potential customer sees us totally different, we may not have that love connection, right? And vice versa. If we don't see the customer as they see themselves, there's not going to be a love connection. So we have to make sure that we're we're looking through those lenses and that we're presenting ourselves exactly how who and what we are. We're not saying that we are a $75 one-way ticket when we know that we're actually a hundred and something dollar one-way ticket. We have to be who we are and present that. And they have to see why they should buy a product or service from us over our competition. That means overhauling our marketing, starting a marathon and pursuing mediums and avenues that we hadn't in the past or hadn't done so with consistency. And consistency is key. You could start anything, but man, if you're not consistent with it, then it's all for naught. It's also important that I empower my team, no matter how big, no how, how small, no matter where we are in the country or the world, to handle certain elements of the plan so that we can build a presence that will ultimately generate trust. Relationships that are strong and lasting are built on trust. Not love, they build on trust. Because I may not love you some days, but I'll trust you. So many businesses struggle with pacing themselves. Some move too fast and others too slow. The pace says a lot about your focus and how you plan and execute on those plans. As I've stated in previous episodes on Don't Call It Small, just as the company is divided in three levels of power, we have senior, mid-level, and frontline. There are three areas of focus that each power level is driven by. For the senior leaders, they focus on strategy, the long-term plan um, that helps them get closer to achieving the mission and fulfilling their why. They then pass that strategic plan to the mid-level team and they say, make this happen. And the mid-level team breaks that strategic plan down and they determine which teams and divisions and departments and regions will be responsible for what, when, and where over a designated period of time. And then those mid-level team members, they hand off the baton to the frontline team who then has to operationalize that plan. And Frontline's responsible for the day-to-day of making magic so that the customer gets the experience they so desire. The operational plan is short-term, action over and over. Working at the kinks, reworking, realigning things when they deviate, and using various control systems to track their progress. The operational plan, when successful, should result in a successful strategic plan. It should be full circle. Everybody should be high-fiving all the way through the company. And here's the thing. While Frontline is working on the day-to-day, do you think that the senior level has put a pin in the strategic plan, they just off playing golf? Heck no. They're obsessed with that long-term plan. They're doing their part to keep raising funds, generating support, gathering the resources needed to support the efforts of the front line. That's also why sometimes that laser focus on the strategy sometimes results in not paying attention when mid-level managers are slacking at providing the necessary support to front line. And if you know what I've said in previous episodes, that's the clog in the pipe syndrome that I've discussed before. 
And I speak in greater detail about this, you know, in coaching sessions, but also I'll speak about in future episodes. And then I have a class that I'm teaching through Foreman Associates that I explain how to avoid this syndrome and how to unclog the pipe if you know that you have clogged pipes in your organization. If you notice that it's already taking place in your organization, you need to do something about that pipe and how do you unclog it. So you can visit foremanllc.com um, backslash online course for details. Now back to marketing. Your organization should have all three types of plans that I described earlier, and your marketing plan and campaign should be built from that strategic, tactical, and operational plans. You should have your short-term, mid-range, and long-term campaigns that build a relationship with consumers. And as I said in previous episodes, business is about relationships. I said this over and over during this time right now, and also in part one of this episode. You're Look, you're attempting to entice and woo people into having a business relationship with you. I keep saying this. And hopefully that relationship can be long term. So your marketing campaign should tell your story and help consumers see themselves being a part of your story. They should want to buy your products or services because they see themselves possessing or experiencing something that you provide. And they think that it's better, more reliable or faster than your competition. If you're totally lost on all of this, don't want to devote the time to do this yourself or understand the importance of delegating, then let me share with you three women who are running companies focused on marketing, branding, publicity, and exposure. So I'm going to go ahead and, and highlight three business women because some people may say, help, I need help, <laughs> help. They're waving all kinds of flags. So let me share three women. And you can contact them or not. You may say, hey, I'm just going to Google it or I'm going to you know, YouTube it or I'm going to just keep looking on Instagram for it. That's your choice. It's really your choice. But I love being able to highlight people. I love being able to share various resources to give you options, right? Information is only powerful if you use it, if it's applied. So I'm providing you with some information. It's up to you to use it. It's up to you to make these connections. It's up to you to build these relationships. You never know how any of the resources that I provide you could benefit you or someone you know. So let me share with you these three business women. women. The first business woman happens to be my maternal cousin. She's a freelance digital marketer, copywriter, and editor that specializes in SEO, web copy, blogging, newsletters, email um, campaigns, press kits, and press releases, and eBooks. Her name is Kim Fisher, and she's the woman behind the Dallas, Texas agency, Kimmy Inc. That's K I M M I E. And Inc., where she creates custom strategies specific to you and your brand. Kimmy Inc. also offers consulting training and full service digital platform management and content creation. So I want you to visit my cousin's website, kimmyinc.com. That's K I M M I E I N K.com to learn more and to schedule a consultation. And I want you to tune in because she's also a podcaster. So I want you to check out her podcast is Sit With Us. You can visit sitwithuspodpod.com. You can also listen to she and her colleague on Spreaker and SoundCloud. And I love that my cousin's resume doesn't end there. Nope. She's also an actress and plus-size model with Grogan Management, LLC. That's my cousin. So to connect with her and her team on social media, you can find her on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Kimmy Inc. That's K-I-M-M-I-E-I-N-K. And remember, with Kimmy Inc., you don't have to spend your valuable time updating or growing your social media accounts. They will professionally manage your brand's social media platforms to increase engagement, design effective lead generation campaigns, and increase channel engagement overall. So visit KimmyInc.com today and tell her you heard about her company on the Don't Call It Small Business podcast. Tell my cousin hello for me. I love you, Kim. Now, the next woman. I met a few years ago when she brought her client DSMs to speak to the economic development class that I co-taught 
at Emory University with my colleague and friend, Dr. Sam Sharibi. She's the woman behind the Earth Angel PR and communications firm, and her name is Shahani Prescott. Earth Angel specializes in the art of storytelling through branding, PR, and communications. Shahani and her team develop and execute integrated campaigns for niche and general markets. They've been in business now since 2007, and Earth Angel has represented some of the most prestigious brands in lifestyle, corporate, technology, film, sports, and nonprofit industries. Let me just quickly list some of her services. Publicity campaign development, media relations list development, media training, crisis management, graphic design services, influencer seating, brand strategy campaigns, competitive analysis, community fairs management, and there's more. You have to go to the website to learn more. Shahani has coordinated publicity campaigns for several top grossing films and television shows for Warner Brothers, um, NBC, Paramount, Disney, DreamWorks, and 20th Century Fox. Her PR expertise has been utilized in the success of many film and television projects, such as the Harry Potter and Hangover film franchises, The Help, America's Got Talent, and The Voice. In addition to the list of long list of client successes, Shahani and her team have a proven success record for garnering publicity and brand development in a national print, online, and broadcast medium such as CNN, Good Morning America, BET, Sports Illustrated, and more. They can be reached. They are located. Earth Angel is in Atlanta, New York City, and Los Angeles. I want you to visit their website, Earth Angel PR, E A R T H. A N G E L P R dot com, Earth Angel PR dot com. They're also on Twitter, Facebook, and IG at Earth Angel PR. Shahani, keep doing your thing. I truly hope that whoever's listening, you see the key word right there storytelling. You never know what Shahani can do for you and your business. She has a long list of clients. Um, and that's she can do her she does her thing she walks the walk now the next woman that i want to introduce you to i met through our mutual friend billy harris the ceo of the vino van llc you do remember the vino van llc correct i introduced you to billy and her company several episodes ago remember yes she provides those amazing wine tours and tastings throughout the state of georgia she is an amazing um, educator on wines, and I have learned so much. My palate has grown um, so much thanks to Billy, just really teaching me and showing me the ways in which to allow my senses to take over and to guide me to what um, I like versus me assuming. Anyway, yeah, so <laughs> that's Billy. And through Billy, I met the woman affectionately known as the Digital Queen. Yes, she's located in Atlanta, Georgia. She's a digital brand specialist. She's CEO of Comfy Art. She's the co-founder of the Patrick Collins Agency, co-host of Digital Tea. She's a digital freelancer and the former brand manager for Aspire TV. She earned her Bachelor of Fine Arts in graphic design from Art Institute of Atlanta and a master's of science in internet marketing from Full Sail University in Florida. She is no other than the digital queen herself, Deanna Collins, and she develops content and strategies for executions across all digital properties, which includes websites, social sites, email, video, and TV. And she knows her stuff when it comes to paid search and social advertisements. Her passions, let me tell you about Deanna's passions. Her passions for technology, design, analytics, and strategy led her to start Comfy Art in 2016. Her company is a concept of um, creating an affordable way to bring unique art into the home space. And through her hard work and dedication, Comfy Art Special Edition, her black and urban coffee mugs, were showcased at the 2017 Essence Festival. They were gifted to audiences sponsored by AT&T and UpTV. Is that not awesome? 
That's awesome. So to learn more about the Digital Queen, Deanna, her companies, and the services that she provides, please visit her website, DeannaCollins.com. That's D-I-O-N-N-A-C-O-L-L-I-N-S.com. You can also call her at area code 404-838-7799. And let's be clear, just because these ladies are in a state that may not be the state that you're in does not mean that they cannot help you. They can still very much help your brand. So call her, area code 404-838-7799. You can also send an email to DCG. S I T E at gmail.com. So DCG site at gmail.com. You can connect with her on social media. She's on Facebook and Instagram at Deanna.collins, on Twitter and Pinterest at Deanna Collins 80. You can find her company, Comfy Art, on Instagram at Comfy Art. That's C O M I A R T. Woo! Wow. What a lineup of wonder women, right? Not just one wonder woman, but wonder women. (laughs) Oh, that is so awesome. I have another Gary V quote for you. He said, it's insane to me to ask anybody to be what they're not. Know what you know the best, love the most. That's always going to be the answer to the thing that you have the best shot at winning at. Wow. I then, I fall, I'm going to follow up with that quote from an unknown contributor. So don't try to steal the quote (laughs) because we don't know who, who said this, but whoever said hustle isn't just working on the things you like. It means doing the things you don't enjoy so you can do the things you love. Well, I can say this. These three women that I just shared with you today love what they do. They know what they know. They stay in their lane and keep pushing and believing in themselves and what they do. Every day they are hustling. Now, see, I would play the song, that song, but I'd have some copyright issues and I'm not about to pay someone. <laughs> <laughs> for that song. So <laughs> So instead I'll play this song. Because I do have the right to play this song. <laughs> Alright folks, you know what it means when you hear this music. It's that time again. It's time to wrap up and go our separate ways until next week. Yes. Don't worry, you'll still be able to connect with me on social media. If you have any questions or suggestions about the show, please email them to don't call it small biz at gmail.com. Let me leave you with another Gary V quote that someone may appreciate and share with others. You ready? I'm going to turn this down just a little bit more. My store, Wine Library, outsells big national chains. How do you think we do it? It started with hustle. I always say that our success wasn't due to my hundreds of online videos about wine that went viral, but to the hours I spent talking to people online afterward, making connections and building relationships. Uh Uh-huh. I hope you're letting that resonate with you. Building relationships. I hope that you're always hustling, connecting, building, and growing. That you're establishing and nurturing healthy relationships with the people inside and outside of your organization. Because guess what? When life does what life does and you and your business are impacted, those relationships will be what steps in to fill the gaps and to keep you going strong. Sometimes big companies forget about the importance and the value of those relationships. They sometimes take them for granted, expecting them to be around and be loyal. And they find out eventually that loyalty is built on trust and trust is built on the consistency of you being there in that relationship, doing your best, right? To keep your word, keep your word. 
and keep going, keep pushing while being authentic and honest along the journey. And try to remember these words from Stephen C. Hogan. You can't have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. With that, be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Foreman and Associates and on Twitter at Foreman LLC. Be sure to also follow us and share us with your friends, colleagues, and family. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn at Natasha L. Foreman. Yes, if you didn't see my announcements late last Monday night, I changed my Instagram handle to match all of my other ones. So now there's a consistent flow. Reach out to me, say hello, share your story. I look forward to meeting you, telling you more about me. I want to make sure that I give proper credit for our show theme song. It's called Higher Up and it's by Shane Ivers. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to the Don't Call It Small Business Podcast, for sharing these episodes with others and for your continued support. And don't forget what I tell you on each and every episode. Don't call what you're doing, planning, thinking, dreaming, little or small, go big, go bold, or go nowhere. I will see you in our online interactions and of course here next week for episode 15 of don't call it small if you didn't listen to part one of this episode 14 please go back and listen to it now have a super awesome day and week i love you all thank you so very much